Hey there, it's Jamie again, and I've got another video for you on time series forecasting. This time we're going to create a simple exponential smoothing forecast using the same data on houses sold that I've been using in the previous couple of examples. Over here in the corner, I've got the two equations that we're going to need. The first is for the level, and the level is simply a weighted average of past observations and past levels. Um, and then our forecast is just going to be based on the level in the previous period. So I'm going to make columns for these two things. The first column I'm going to make, the first thing we're going to do is calculate the level. And then after that, we're going to calculate the forecast. Then you can see the way I've set up my spreadsheet. There's room here to calculate all of your errors. I'm not going to do that in the video because it takes a lot of time, um, but you can do that yourself and I'll give you some check figure values to compare your results with what I got. So we're going to start with calculating the level. When you do an exponential smoothing forecast, we start our first level equal to the actual level of sales in that time period. It's because typically the level would be based on historical data before our first data point, but we don't have any more data, so we just let the level be equal to the houses sold in that period. In math speak, we would say that for that first period, L sub t, the level at, some, at time t, is equal to y at, sub time, it, y at time t. All right, so now let's start. I'm going to use this formula. The level at time t is equal to alpha, a value that we're going to have to select, multiplied by y at time t. And then we're going to add to that 1 minus alpha times the level at time t minus 1. That's just the previous level. Alpha, I'm going to start with the number 0 0.2, but this is in a way it's our weighting factor. This formula is a weighted average factor. Alpha 2, uh, 0.2 in this case, we're going to say that our current level and thus our current forecast is going to be based 20% on actual sales and 1 minus alpha, so 80% on the previous level. But because the previous level is the same, calculated the same way, based on actual houses sold, we're combining the most recent value and essentially all the previous values to get the level and thus the forecast. So I'm going to use 0.2 as an alpha, and I'm going to enter this formula. So the level at time t, this box, is equal to alpha, and I'm going to use an absolute reference because that value, I'd like to be able to drag it down, multiplied by y at time t, so y at the same time as the level I'm trying to forecast, and then I'm going to add to that 1 minus alpha, again command t to get, or f4 to get the absolute reference, multiplied by the level at time t minus 1. So time t minus 1 is the level in the year before, or the period before, the month before in this case. And then I hit enter. I'm going to enter that one more time kind of quickly just so you can see how I do it, but then we'll drag it down. So this level is equal to alpha multiplied by the current y, and we're going to add to that 1 minus alpha multiplied by the previous year's level. Then we can just double click and our level will be filled out till the end. And then our forecast, we can't place our forecast here because we don't have a level in the previous period. So I'm going to gray that out. We're going to start here. Our first forecast is going to happen at least one period beyond where we've started. And our forecast for time t plus k, this is a t plus 1 forecast, it's just equal to the level in the previous period. 
So our forecast is just last month's level. So again, that's the historical part of the forecast. That's how this gives us a chance to see how the forecast would have performed had we used it on data where we can evaluate how it performed. But the real piece of forecasting is estimating the future. So we have to actually then do the forecast. I'm going to drag down these dates to February 2019 and I'm going to make our actual forecast in the color red. So our formula for the forecast, the forecast at time t plus k for any level of k, for any value of k, is just equal to level at time t. So what does that mean? It means that when we're using an exponential smoothing forecast, we're essentially saying that we can forecast one period ahead, but after that, we're just going to assume that that forecast doesn't change. No matter how many periods out we forecast, we're still going to use the last known level as our forecast. So how does that work? I can drag this down one more column, one more row, I mean. And here we've got our forecast for March 2018 is equal to the level from to February 2018. After that, our forecast is just going to be equal to that previous level. No matter how far out we go. Let's see how that looks on a graph. I'm going to hide this to make graphing easier. And then I'm going to insert, I'm going to try recommended charts. This is great. Where do I want to put it? I'm confused. I can't decide. So much pressure. Let's put it here. It seems like a really good place. It's going to fit. And I'm going to call this forecast and original observations. And I'm going to format this axis. No decimal places. And then I'm going to add a label there. And it's going to be called monthly house sales. Thousands. All right. Then here's something that I want to do is that that was my phone ringing. I was going to try to mute it really quickly. Um, in the other graphs I've done, I've had the blue for the actual and then the red for the forecasted, I'm going to maintain that color convention. It didn't use red because there's this missing column C. So under my data series, I'm just going to look for the fill color. And I'm going to change that to the color that it's that is used in Excel by default so that each of the forecast graphs that I make have the same color convention. So, all right, I wanted to show you just a, the error totals in case you wanted to calculate the errors and then compare. The mean absolute error in this example is 28.82. The root mean squared error in this example is 35.86. And the mean absolute percentage error in this example is 6.59%. So now you can do a check figures just so that you know that you're on the same page. All right, simple exponential smoothing forecast applied to trending data, but you can see that the exponential smoothing forecasts a horizontal movement in future house price sales, which is likely to be unlikely to be true given this upward trajectory. In our next video, I'm gonna show you how to modify 
the exponential smoothing forecast method to take advantage or to, to forecast data with a trend in such a way that your forecast continues to head in the direction of that trend. All right, I'll see you with the next video. Let me know if you have any questions.